I'm David Esrati. I've been going to Dane School Board meetings for quite a while and trying to keep everybody up to date on what goes on. The meeting you're about to watch is just another example of why we have a school board that's like no other. You're going to see confusion about what they're actually voting on. You're going to see a total mismanagement of public speakers. The limit is three minutes. I stuck to three minutes. Almost nobody else did. They didn't put the timer up, they took it down. I've got to wonder, is it because there's special preference given or because Reverend Harris lets people speak that he knows in the community or that will come back to talk to his friends? Other people, he has no problems cutting off. Now, what they're voting on and what a lot of the discussion, and I really have to say, some of the speeches given by other citizens were outstanding and you really should watch them, even though they all run over three minutes. But what happened was the school board a couple weeks ago accidentally put up a document on board docs and then took it down and it had the name of the Dunbar football coach. Who the next coach is really didn't matter at that point because they hadn't even bothered yet to interview coach Darren Powell or any of the existing staff that had applied. These are men who not only graduated from Dunbar but have worked at Dunbar for years as coaches. They are winning coaches over and over and over. The person who is behind the, you gotta blow this game, was Mark Baker, the athletic director, who kept his job after the first error. And then we had a second one where coach Chuck Taylor, who was hired after they dismissed Pete Pullen, who also had a long record of winning. They dismissed him hired a political hack, Taylor, who then also took the district into a whole bunch of trouble, which cost them over $25,000 in legal fees, which they were voting to give some of the money to last night. And on top of that, Taylor, we still don't know if he's been replaced or not, but the, the more incredible part is Dayton was banned from hosting any postseason play which means a big, huge drop of revenue for events that we could have had at Welcome Stadium. Mind you, membership in the Ohio High School Athletic Association is totally voluntary and it's a private organization. So being fined by them should have been the first indication and told that they didn't want Baker as, super, as uh, athletic director because of the violations and that he was obviously unsuited and unfit for the job. But then to have it continue on just brought more and more fines and penalties. Now, whether the new coach is as bad as Chuck Taylor, we won't know right away. But in the meantime, it's awfully late and these students are missing time of practice while this board has been screwing around and the superintendent has been screwing around. I also really, the woman in the pink hat, I think her name is Mrs. Greer, but I'm not positive. She gave a speech about what's typical of the district. Here's somebody who's trying to enroll their student in the district, an honor student, and the notifications, all the processes and procedures weren't followed, weren't handled well, and they wonder why they've had dropping enrollment. This fully falls on the shoulders of one Dr. Sheila Burton, the last woman standing in the many superintendents that have fallen lately and who I believe is the root of most of the problems in the district. For me to actually call somebody out in a school district is rare. Single person, not in leadership position. But she has just been around and involved in way too many issues. And nobody seems to point a finger at her. So, you'll see a, some, a parent talk, uh, or a guardian talk for almost 10 minutes about failures in enrollment. That falls under Sheila Burton. Somebody needs to be held accountable. When the documents were put up by human resources that had the coaching error and then were taken down before any interviews, that it falls fully on the shoulders of the head of HR. And again, nothing is done. She falls under Dr. Sheila Burton. This district is a district in shambles. It should be thoroughly cleaned up, cleaned out, the people that you elected, William Harris, Mohammed Alhamdani, Karen Wick Gagne, and Jocelyn Reinard, have fallen into basically lockstep and follow all the orders given to them 
by this new superintendent and through and serve as a surrogate for Mayor Nan Whaley, who has visions of running this district the way the mayor in Cleveland does, the way the mayor in Chicago does, the way the mayor in New York City does. And just so you know, there's a scandal brewing in Chicago right now with Rahm Emanuel where pedophiles were working for the district. It was being covered up and they never did proper background checks. In New York City, they're trying to figure out how to stop discriminating against students getting into premium schools, much like what we have at Stivers and Ponitz. If you look at the makeup of Stivers, it does not match the makeup of the district. And Dayton residents are getting bumped in favor of people paying tuition from outside the district. This has never been addressed. In the meantime, the new superintendent has spent ungodly amounts of money bringing in high paid PhDs, making over $117,000 a year to try to right things in the district. The real problem isn't leadership per se, but the entire culture of the organization is one of fear and one of distrust. And that is not being solved by this superintendent and her relationship with the community. Watch the video carefully. And one other note, I had to leave after the vote because I had to go to the sales tax forum. So after the vote on Darren Powell, I folded up and left. I heard the board did not live stream this meeting the way they had planned to. Um, hopefully this will be the first chance you get to see it. They might have uploaded it to YouTube as well. But if you watch it here, it helps support the journalism I do. If you watch it on the board, it doesn't do anything. Thank you so much for watching, paying attention, and caring about the Dayton Public Schools. I'm David Esrati. Please subscribe to this channel. Thank you. Present. Ms. Taylor? Present. Dr. Walker? Present. Ms. Wickany? Present. Seven present. May we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge This evening we have some special presentations and we are excited about the opportunity to share uh, the great news of our young people as they participated in a debate tournament. I'm going to ask Judy Martin, put a bar, put a bar. Did I pronounce that correct? I tried. I apologize. Hi. Good evening. My name is Jody Martin Puderball, and I had the opportunity over the past year to work with six high schools and eight middle schools in the district um, with the debate competition. The students practiced once a month at Wright Brothers, and then in April we had a final debate competition at uh, Belmont High School. So we have several of the students here tonight, and I'm just going to go through and give them their certificates. Dr. Lally is... For our, for our first place middle school um, debaters uh, goes to Stiver School of the Arts. And on that team, uh, it consisted of Lena Fatorsky, Nicole Fatorsky, Lene Lucana, and Marcio Gracie Garcia Verdaz. And I don't think any of those team members are here. They were coached by um, Jovan Webster. Okay, sorry. Next. <laughs> Next for second place was Dayton Boys Prep. Do I have any of those boys here? Okay. <laughs> um, their coach was Brandy Barwick Rankin. Um, boys, if you want to come stand right up here and I will hand you your certificates.
First, we have Cato Mayberry. Um, Desmond Darden. Sorry. And Damian Darden. Third place goes to Charity Adams Girls School. Do we have anybody here representing? Um, they, they were coached by Jennifer Marchetta, and tonight with us here we have Bre Brio Ruggs. Okay, so for the middle schools, uh, Stiver School for the Arts took first place, second place went to boys uh, school, and third place was to the girls school. Okay, congratulations. Okay, for our high schools, first place was Stiver School of the Arts, and they were coached by Michael Unger. Do we have any Stiver students? We have with us Zoe Williams. Zoe, sorry. Congratulations. <laughs> Second place went to um, Ponitz Career Technology Center. Do we have anybody here from Ponitz? Okay, they were coached by Lonnie Meyer, and they took second place. And our third place high school was Dunbar High School, and tonight we have Kamari Chambers representing Dunbar. just like to say um, working with these children we had some challenges this year we had some snow days that interfered with some of our practice debates we had to reschedule some things but we came together in the ending um, at Belmont we had a really nice day so thank you all and hope you have fun it next year thank you Good evening, President Harris, board members, Madam Superintendent, cabinet members, and members of the Dayton community. Thanks for the opportunity to speak before you tonight. I will do, the, do my speech backwards because I have these wonderful people behind me and you don't want to stand up there forever. So each spring, all teachers in DPS classrooms are eligible for grants up to $500 from the DPS Foundation and uh, for things that are normally not spent on by DPS. These teachers are to be congratulated for their willingness to innovate. The DPS Foundation is happy to announce our teacher grant awards for school year 2018-2019. First of all, Jennifer Kane. She's, she is uh, going to install in her classroom a maker space for STEM, uh, 
STEM stations, say that fast, um, and uh, it's gonna be challenging them to do all kinds of STEM projects. Next is Kim Dubbs. I saw her walk in, yeah, there he goes. Kim Dubbs is from E.J. Brown Middle School, grade seven and eight science. She's going to have her kids do the balancing act. She had two grants because um, she was very modest and she said, well, she only needed so many digital balances and we found out that the school could use much more and so we went ahead and added some more to her grant. Um, next is Christine Irby. She's going to be steamable. <laughs> She's from Westwood Pre-K 6. She works with K-3 special abilities and her students will be learning STEAM concepts as they create colorful robots. They're going to learn their directions above, forward, backwards, and so on. We take that for granted. Next is Tonda Lerner from Cleveland Pre-K-8. She works with, six rather, she works with ECE. Her grant is, is called Conscious Discipline for Preschool Families. It's a school home connection where they're going to be using books and then giving those books to take home to the children so that the parents can be read to by the children. And they'll have a puppet to reenact the story at home as well. Um, next is Nancy McSherry from Kemp Pre-K-6. She works with ESL students. She's going to create language ambassadors. Her students are going to be paired with um, other students that will be ambassadors for any greeters that are people that come into the school. And the buddies will orient their new partners and answer questions after receiving training. They'll have special shirts and special opportunities to make people comfortable in their home school. So those are the four that have been here today. Uh, there's uh, one more was not able to come, and that is Leah Florentino. She's working with Early Childhood Technology Integration. She's from Kemp Pre-K-6 for Early Childhood, and she, they're gonna be using tablets with special programs on them to learn the basic naming of, of letters and numbers. So we thank her for her innovation as well. So those are ours. So I'd like to bend your ear a little more if you would be glad to sit up in your chairs and then we'll talk from there. Oh, oh sorry. Could we, could we have the teachers come and take a picture with you? Do you have the camera? Yes, I have the with the okay. camera. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. I forgot. We have one board member going to join us. This is Dawn Kirshner. She's from the Boonshoff Museum. Okay. I know you said ten minutes. Now the beginning of my speech went this way. I'm Nancy Nerney, former board member, now chair of the DPS Foundation. As the board knows, our shared interest is to advance the success of all Dayton Public School students, supporting the efforts of you and the district superintendents to accomplish that. That demands that we work closely with you as a board, your board and our board, making your strategic objectives ours. To assure that, board member Raynard has graciously consented to be an ex officio member on our board to help with two-way communication. So if you have concerns that you would like to send to us, she's got a great pipeline going, so, and we respond, so thank you. What have we been up to? Well, the wellness committee of DPS sponsored a 5K run at Welcome Stadium, and we did see Dr. Walker there. He was running and reminding us to keep active. 
but all community members, both this year and next, are invited to come and help us learn about keeping our bodies fit. We want to thank the community health groups that were able to come and display those wellness tips for us, as well as the free veggie burgers that were there as well. Because of the generosity of your employees and our community donors, we've been able to give out this year $14,000 in music grants to band directors and instructors to purchase musical instruments to further the district's new instrumental music initiative for our high schools. We're grateful to the district's HR, PR, teaching and learning departments, and the treasurer's office for their support in implementing all these grants. And we look forward to the growth of the bands as we continue to support them this next year. We remind the community, especially DPS alumni. By the way, how many people here are DPS alumni? Yay, thank you. We, we know you're hiding. We'll get you one of these days. Anyway, we remind the community and the DPS alumni that they can support our bands by dropping off their used instruments to the DPS lobby or to any Grismer Tire Company. They'll collect them and get them back to our schools that are very in need of instruments. We appreciate, board, your hiring and arts coordinator who will hopefully get our talented musicians and artists out into the community to be appreciated. Now if you could support them by looking at or strengthening the transport they need for events, field trips, and after school classes. Each, uh, wait, I think that's all. Oops, oops, go backwards. We've given you the list of our um, grantees. We want you to um, Enjoy that. We'd like to do more next year, dependent on our money that we receive. And we thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Nerney. We appreciate what you're doing in your committee. At this time, we will have hearing of our bargaining units. And uh, <clears throat> I would like it to be known that uh, David Romick is out of town at a leadership conference along with the administrative team, so they're not present today. Uh, and also, uh, Sheila Burton, Dr. Sheila Burton uh, has a funeral, so she is, not, she is not present. At this time, do we have any other bargaining units present that would like to share? Hearing none, we move toward our Hearing of the public, just like to share some information for all of us. The public is invited to attend board meetings and individuals are given a designated time to express viewpoints during the public hearing portion of the meeting. Anyone wishing to address the Board of Education during the hearing of the public portion of the board meeting will comply with the following rules. First, complete a request form prior to the hearing of the public and submit it to the public information officer. Two, when called upon, identify yourself and state your reason for addressing the board. Three, address the board as a whole through the president, not board members individually. Four, materials for distribution to the board are handed to the treasurer. Number five, limit your remarks to three minutes. The president has the discretion to extend the time. When your time is up, you are to stop speaking. Six. It is inappropriate to address any matter involving pending disputes, grievances under a labor agreement, disciplinary action involving an employee or student, ongoing labor negotiations, concerns, or matters that have already been settled and or any matter which because of its nature is deemed appropriate to be discussed in executive session. The purpose of the public hearing portion of the meeting is for members of the public to express viewpoints and public concerns. So thank you very much. At this time, uh, Treasurer Abraha, do you have individuals that would like to share with the board? Yes, Mr. Yu, and followed by Aaron Richardson, Jr. Good evening. Good evening. Bill Marquardt, Bill Parrish, Bob Denny, Scott Smith, Lou Galliardi, Jonas Smith, and Mark Baker. These have been athletic directors in the Dayton Public Schools for 50 years. And that's what I've been around, 50 years in Dayton Public School Athletics. And if you're trying to figure out the math, yes, I am about 83 years old. The Dayton Public Schools 
used to be the mecca of sports in this area. But now, because of adult mistakes, we are now at the bottom. And the students that have been hurt are these students that are here tonight, the Dunbar Wolverines. The Dayton Public Schools gave a speech the other day where they said that they love their Dayton athletes. But let me tell you, actions speak louder than words. You can talk the talk, but you must walk the walk. Dayton schools have excellent teams. Football, the Dunbar Wolverines, basketball teams, going to the state constantly. And in track, the Dunbar Wolverines finished second this year in the state. They did an outstanding job. I want to tell you that I had the opportunity to meet with Shauna Welch, and I was very pleased to do that. She gave me a one-hour meeting, and Dr. Harris, I have to tell you, I had more than three minutes. I had 57 minutes. So she may be putting in for a pay raise after she talked to me. I want to tell you that I think she's going to do a wonderful job. She works hard. As a principal, everyone loved her efforts. She gets along with people, and she's going to listen. She's going to ask questions. And she gave me her phone number and her email address, and I did also. So if she has anything she wants to talk about, I will talk with her and give her maybe some advice. She may listen, and she may not. The thing is right now that she will need our support to get things going back on track again. I only want to end up by saying that I think she's going to really help our Dayton Public School athletes, and she's coming in from behind. And she told me that. But what she's going to do is, with 10 seconds to go in the game and 65 yards to win the touchdown game, to need a touchdown, she's going to come in and throw a touchdown pass, and the Dayton Public School athletes are going to be winners again. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Releasing our coaching staff at Dunbar High School only slows our improvement process down. Our coaches do nothing but proactive actions to better our student attendance and also to improve graduation rates. With our coaches persuading lots of the youth to become student athletes, it keeps kids away from trouble. There are a few too many stories that our Dunbar coaching staff has been involved on in turning kids into scholars and graduates. Not only does the staff get involved in school improvement, but they also bless kids in certain circumstances with assistance, allowing kids to overcome their struggles. As athletes on this football team, it's hard to build such a bond as we have with our coaches just for it to be exploited so easily. For about the past six years, this program has put, has put kids into college, giving them the opportunity to thrive as men in society. On the outside, people in our community have unrealistic viewpoints on our coaching staff. On the inside, our coaches are really fighting every day in order to give us a chance to earn a college education and keep many off the streets, out of jail, and honestly, alive. The main point is that we don't only need our coaches just to be beneficial on the football field, but we also need them as a benefit to our success and maturity as men and scholars. Thank you for your time and attention. Hopefully you have a better understanding of why we need our coaching staff. David Izrati, followed by Christiol Vaughn. David S. Roddy, 100 Bonner Street. So today, you're going to pay the Ohio High School Athletic Association 9,300 or whatever dollars, in addition to part of a fine that was assessed from a year and a half ago. The crazy thing is, that's a voluntary organization. You voluntarily joined that organization. You agreed to do what they say. You're a member, 
And for them to fine you in the first place should have been indication that something was very wrong. And that was after the first football fiasco over almost two years ago. The athletic director wasn't removed then. Things continued, changes weren't made. And then we had the same thing happen, another instance involving the very same athletic director, same school, and the athletic director still has a job, though it's not the same job. In the meantime, the losers are the kids and the taxpayers, because not only did we lose the money from paying the fines, we lost the money from paying the lawyer's bills. We lost the money from all the events that we cannot host at Welcome Stadium. We lost credibility. We've lost players. And the crazy thing is, is the only people who suffered in all of this, other than the taxpayers and the kids, are still suffering because we still don't know who the basketball coach is at Dunbar for next season. I hate to tell you, but parents are making their minds up right now on where they're going to enroll their kids for next year. And I just can't fathom how an organization that's looking at enrollment drops and wondering how we're going to get these kids back in hasn't made one iota of an attempt to listen to the parents or to keep parents or tell them who's going to be your coach next year. Because that basketball program, in case you didn't know, keeps winning championships over and over and over Amen. with the last coach, the one that you let go. Not very nicely, I might add. So as today, when you write that check, just remember, when lawyers give you advice on how to do things, sometimes you have to say, wait a second. In lawsuits, there's only one winner, and that's the lawyers, because they keep billing and billing and billing and telling you, keep going, keep going. Oh, I can win this. And even when they lose, they don't lose, because they still turn in the bills, and you still pay them. And we're still paying them. You've gotten crappy legal advice on, on suing OSHA. You lost. It's cost us ungodly money and I think you need to hold yourselves accountable and most than anything you need to tell these kids who their coach is going to be next year. Thank you. Hi, how y'all guys doing this evening? My name is Sintel Vaughn. I play football for Dunbar and what y'all doing to our, as, as students, y'all don't see how we coming from it. Like, them, them coaches out there, they like father figures for the kids that don't have a father, such as myself. All of them, that's like my family out there. It's not one day when I cannot call them and tell them I need something. I know they're going to come bring it. Like, them coaches out there, that, that's my family. This football team, my family. And for real, for real, y'all. It's like y'all breaking up my family. And we, as a team, we don't like it. We, we hurting, we didn't feel back. We ain't been in contact with them. We ain't touched the weight room. We far behind on everything. Like we didn't miss college camps to go to, college visits. Like y'all just like destroying, y'all trying to separate us piece by piece. As the dude said over there, first it was pulling. Now y'all trying to take away Coach Darren. I don't see why why for something that happened two, two years ago. Why didn't y'all just take him away in the first place? Them coaches, they've been there since, the, since, it, since it was rough for people. Remember times where I ain't had something, and they came and brought it to me. I ain't had deodorant one day. They'll bring it. You ain't got shorts. They'll bring it. Them coaches, like, they put they put everything to us. Yeah, they got kids and all, but we they kids too. As a as a team, we they kids. Like I actually can honestly say I love every coach on that staff, and I'd do anything to get them back. Like that's all I had to say. Isaiah Guerrier, followed by Margaret Bruce. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, 
Good evening. Um, my name is Isaiah Greer, and this is my first actual year in Dayton and in Ohio. Um, and about in like August is gonna be like my full full year. And I used to live in New Jersey with my uncle and everything. And um, back back when I was there, and I used to play football for a little bit there. Um, it, it didn't feel like. When I was playing football back back in Jersey, it didn't feel like everyone was collected. Like the coaches, there was always problems or something, always problems with students, and we never like got anything done. Here, I feel like it's the complete opposite of that. Dunbar, um, like my friend Sandy said, this feels like family. Everybody here is family. Uh, and I know Coach Dare and Coach Powell done a lot. It helped me a lot because when I came in here at first, I used to live at uh, St. Vincent de Paul shelter. And there was countless of times where I was, I was hurting and Coach Powell, and I asked Coach Powell if I could stay over there. And he would let me, and he's let me stay over there for like weeks at a time. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't see, I don't see why, why we need to get rid of these coaches. These coaches are really good. And that's all I got to say. Good evening, everyone. To God be the glory. Unfortunately, we live at a time in our society when negative words and actions have become our new normal. We watch as innocent children are ripped away from their mothers and fathers, and we mask the pain we feel for them. However, this is a horrific reminder to our people that children were ripped from the arms of their mothers and fathers and sold into slavery, and they wore the mask to hide their pain also. How many of you have read any of the poems of our school's namesake, Mr. Paul Lawrence Dunbar? May I suggest at your convenience you read the poem, We Wear the Mask. You may gain understanding of our plight. By the way, on June 27th, we celebrate the 143rd birthday of, our, of Mr. Dunbar. If you have the opportunity to stop by Dunbar House on June 23rd, 1 to 1.30, and 1 to 3.30, it would be nice if our board members understand his legacy. When visitors come from all over the nation to understand his legacy, we should know as well. If you have time, stop by Dunbar High School for Dunbar Day so that you can get to understand our community on Saturday also. I give you the previous facts regarding we wear the mask to let the DPS board know we shall no longer wear the mask. We shall no longer wear the mask to hide our pain or discontent with decisions made we disagree with because you don't understand our legacy or struggles for the same. So let me explain, contrary to popular beliefs, our legacy includes mayors of the city of Dayton, commissioners, doctors, lawyers, chemists, scientists, entertainers, civil rights leaders, judges, Tuskegee Airmen, internationally acclaimed poet Paul Lawrence Dunbar, custodians, factory workers, bus drivers, coaches, dishwashers, professional athletes, principals, teachers, etc. But most importantly, a legacy built on our people who were not afforded the education based on the color of their skin. So we shall, know, we shall not allow our legacy to be fractured by insinuations by anyone, board, news media, whomever, that two incidents in our illustrious history defines us. It is not well in our community you have removed two endeared coaches. Coach Pullins with a national record breaking stellar career and role model ripped out of the lives of our athletes and students. Now our students have a second coach. Coach Darren Powell ripped away a young man who also has gone above and beyond to nurture our students, athletes to soar academically, socially, and athletically. You may want to research the numbers of young men and women who were afforded the opportunity to further their education based on their athleticism from the first graduating class of 1936 to the current class of 2018 of Dunbar High School. It is especially important for our community and culture to have someone who can relate to our young men and women and vice versa. In closing, it's not acceptable that the only excuse is that the board is going in a new direction. The legacy of Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School shall continue soaring before a new direction and after a new direction. And I thank you and God bless you. Dale Robins Robinson, followed by Trina Greer. Uh, 
Good evening. Uh, so I'm Dale Robinson. Uh, I want to talk about. I'm a former player at uh, Dunbar High School, but I was there uh, all four years. But I still remember that day, uh, like it was yesterday, October 28th, 2016, when the first fiasco went down. Uh, and I remember the months of just fighting and the lawsuits and arguments and the parent meetings and the, all the uh, Fox News up at the school almost every week. And I remember last year we were up here doing the same thing, trying to get Coach Darren's job back and all our other coaches. But what I'm still confused on is why Mark Baker has a job. And it bothers me because I've never talked to Mark Baker a day of my life. But I could call any one of those coaches, and they will put, just like uh, how Sintel said, they'll be right there for me. If I need a pair of cleats, they're there for me. If I need a ride from my house, they're there for me. If I need a meal, they're there for me. But I just wanted you guys to think about the kids before you think about the adults. And think about everything that all these coaches have done for us. They've put kids into college. They've kept kids alive, just as uh, Sintel said. And I just want you guys to think about what you're taking away from from my teammates. Uh, and I just want you guys to think about the future of these of the children that don't have a coach right now. There are juniors and seniors who have college um, scholarship offers, but they don't have a coach right now to help them prepare for that next level because of the decision you guys made. So I just want you to think about that. Thank you. Professor Alfred Powell, followed by Cheryl Graham. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Trina Greer. I'm Isaiah Greer's mother. And I lived in New Jersey before I came to live out in Ohio. And I simply came out here because I like the look of the town of Dayton, Ohio. I'm an over-the-road truck driver, and I travel a lot. I've been all over the country. The support that the coaching team has given my son is excellent. And Dunbar High School has exceeded my expectations. We have had trouble in the past, and we are working things out. And now I'm looking at being a business owner, and Isaiah is looking at going to college. And it's all due to the support of the staff, of the school district, and of the coaching staff. They have done an amazing job for me as a single mother to show him, to support him, and to guide him of being a good man in this community. We want to continue to stay in Ohio and be a part of the Dayton, Ohio curriculum and school district. The coaches have put a circle around me. They have prayed for me. They have showed me endless support of being a part of this community. And they have done everything they could for Isaiah to see him play ball and stay in school. He is my only child. And his happiness means the, mean, the world to me. If Isaiah looked at me and said, Mom, I want to go back to New Jersey, he'd be back in New Jersey. But he has said to me several times, because of this coaching staff and the support that he has gotten at Dunbar, he doesn't want to go back to New Jersey. This is a good school district, and it has been excellent for Isaiah. And I want to thank you for your support and your time. And I hope things don't change within the Dunbar school. I hope not to see one of these kids unhappy at that school. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. You are currently or in the process of receiving pink slips.
from me. My name is Cheryl Grimes. I'm a grandparent and the guardian of Isaac Grimes, and I'm here on his behalf. The reason I am here is because customer service for students is not acceptable from our letter of rejection or non-acceptance opponents. We received a late notification of acceptance to be selected for high school 2018-2019 in June. We applied to this particular high school on time in February 2018. The letter indicated that there were an overwhelming amount of students applying for a freshman year and that Isaac was not accepted, but gave well wishes if he choose wherever he choose to go. They offered no possibility of services such from, from DPS like, well, we're going to place him on a waiting list in case a student doesn't make it. Or the council will talk to you about the other opportunities in Dayton Public or other programs of the interest or that are available to him. Isaac attended DPS from grades K through three and as a superintendent scholar. He went on to a charter school because his, the uh, fourth grade instructor was not of the quality that I felt was that I had to do double work. And so I moved him to a charter school and, and where he received a junior honor society in the seventh grade. He had hopes of completing high school at Ponus where his other two brothers attend. And one has already been invited to participate in the National Honor Society this upcoming year. Isaac has aspirations of attending Morehouse College and the School of Pediatric Medicine. He usually attend Bible camps and participate in national service missions all over this uh, out of the state and out of the uh, local area. As a grandparent, I am proactive for him because I call two to three weeks after the information should have been given to us about whether or not he was accepted. So we're talking about March or April. Then I call late April and was told that it wasn't ready. This is what the front desk secretary said. I call back in late May and was told it still wasn't ready, but they will be getting it as soon as school is out. Now, mind you, this is a young man who wants to start school in September. What are his options? I went to the school on Monday, June the 11th, only to have been told that the principal was gone and will be out until July, the end of July. Now where am I? I need to know the criteria. I went because I want to know what was the criteria for him not being accepted. Then I left and went to the main building, came to the main office, went to ask to speak to the superintendent, went to that office and called. I mean, I couldn't get to her office because she was in a, some special meeting someplace. Oh, no, no, it wasn't. Excuse me. She was at a golf island or some type of item for the kids. I don't remember specifically, but she wasn't available. So I called and left a message that day. Then I called the next day. Then I waited two days and called. Each day I called, I left the message. I had to call approximately four times. I have not gotten a return or email. Then I went to the, uh, began to re-register Isaac back into the district, only to ask of the report cards of the other schools in the district and was told they all had failing grades. Now at this point, my heart is bleeding not with red blood, but with tears coming from my eyes. I'm looking at a district that is probably 75, 80% African Americans. And you mean to tell me that there are failing schools and you have four year university teachers teaching and each child probably have at least one parent or one guardian and we have advocates all over the legal system and we are what? Failing, are you serious? Yes, very serious. Where is my child going to go? The lady there asked, encouraged me to review the other 
positive information about the schools in order to make my selection. Now, I am here on his behalf today to find out what was the criteria for the selection of students to go to opponents and to ask this Board of Education to consider an educational opportunity for him or, or, or are we going to have to go out of district and send his money that you receive being a Dayton um, resident to another district for the next four years? Am I going to make a choice between which of the failing schools he plans to attend or what, what, where, where am I? I'm hurting. I've had these kids, I've had him since he was two. They brought me four kids. And I have them bagged up a day on serving them. I pay my taxes religiously. The buildings that you have here new, I pay extra. I have three pieces of property here in Dayton and I'm paying a lot. And my child cannot get an opportunity to speak to the principal. We don't know why he can't go. And then I'm here today listening to these young people talking about information I know nothing about. However, it seems that there's a misconnect with customer service. When we call these schools, I need to hear a smile. If that principal isn't there, I need to know who's the next person in charge to help my situation. I'm not bringing you a bad child. I'm bringing you an honor student. I'm bringing you a kid with, with, with a, a future. Why can't I get the results? I don't know. This is now June the 19th, and I've been on this since June the 5th. Now you help me, please. I don't like the fact that charter schools are here at all because I am a public school kid from Mississippi mm -hmm. and I have a degree and everything I need all the way up the line and you can't tell me that these kids in Dayton Ohio cannot learn and they need to be cherry picked out and go to someplace else to be educated I believe in public schools and I believe in Dayton system. I would like to know that, let you know, not, not let you know, I like to share with you the fact that charter schools does not be, need to be our elephant in our district. Whatever it takes to get it right, get it right. If it takes working all night, I have, I'm a grandmother. I'm up at 536 and I'm going to bed at two and three. It doesn't matter with me because the job has to be done my grandkids have to succeed. It would be very difficult for anyone to know that I'm raising a special needs student in the midst of this because I teach excellence all day, every day. And I know that if we are doing what we're supposed to do in Dayton Public Schools, I would have the results that I need to know. If there was a letter that would say, we only want kids who are this way, then I need somebody to tell me that. And then I will go someplace else. Thank you. But Ms. I need to know. Ms. Grimes, I'm I want you to know that we hear you. I'm going to instruct the superintendent to get in touch with the uh, principal and to uh, see how we can alleviate this situation as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ms. Grimes, we need to have you. Would you see Ms. Gum? to give us your telephone number so we, can, we have the correct number. We don't have your correct telephone number. All right, I understand Dr. Burton called you three times. We have the wrong number apparently. Thank you. Uh, you have others? Okay, Professor Pawn. First of all, there's always a saying, you don't preach behind the preacher. Mrs. Grimes, I don't know her, but I would love to have her son at a Dunbar High School. But I understand why we don't get those sometimes, because there's a stigma against Dunbar. I've had people in this profession 
tell me that y'all need to be down here talking about something other than athletics. And I said, that's, an, that's some hypocrisy there. Because my athletic director in this district make more than my principals. We asked him for equity when people are chosen for, for positions. I've been coming down here. I looked in my, um, I almost said diary, I looked in my journal. Uh, my first visit here was 1974. And I was a junior at Roosevelt High School. Didn't get a chance to go to my beloved Dunbar High School. And I was here debating over the rumor that Roosevelt was going to be closed. Oh, no, no, no. Roosevelt was closed the following year. Then I think about the fact that the legacy of Dunbar High School is dismissed. Why is there so much hyper suspicion amongst the Dunbar family about anything and decisions that's made at Dunbar? We've been told all our lives to trust the process. We're there for Dunbar or whatever. Dunbar is a result of being redlined. It is why it came into existence. We've always been fighting against the odds. Sports is just a metaphor that best mimic the lives of people from Mississippi and Alabama and Georgia that ended up in Dunbar High School in Dayton, Ohio. And we've always been told, when I was in a classroom at Roosevelt and he was in a classroom at Dunbar, Mr. Faison, we one thing that we had in common. We opened a book and the book came from Belmont or we were right. <laughs> we always got leftovers and left out. And no one ever asks us about our pain. But I'm going to tell you those things stay with you the rest of your life because I became an activist as, as a result of that. And I, I sent you all, I think I sent you all, Ms. Taylor, I apologize, I tried to send it to you, but your email kept bouncing back to me. But I sent you all letters talking about the psychological and social and collective damage that will be done to these young people. No one ever asked what happened to the young men who played on the Pete Pullers. What happened to those three or four that transferred? And what nobody ever asked that, but no one ever considered it was the damage that they were torn, a surrogate father was torn away, and now we're right back in it. And people keep telling me this is not related to two years ago, but I know this much. My daddy says, son, you can't allow people, people to pee pee on your foot and tell you that it's rain. And Dunbar family feel like it's raining. We're back here again for no probable cause. All the criteria to be a head coach in Dayton Public Schools, Darren Powell meets. Darren Powell is at probation hearings. Darren Powell is at crack houses pulling kids out. He's at gang meetings amongst old 30, 35-year-old men who are trying to keep them guys in gangs. That's where he's at. And we're going in a new direction after eight and four and going to the playoffs, which no board members attended that game. Everybody went to Belmont's game, but we didn't take it personal. We're used to being TT'd on and told that it's raining. It's got to stop raining. What plan do you have in effect if you decide to go in a new direction? Is it going to be the same direction that says we give you no counseling, we give you no help? They'll get over it. That young black man will get over it. What did he do wrong? You're teaching them not to trust. They're going to be taxpayers one day. You're teaching them not to trust you. We can't hide behind the mask anymore. I beg of you to spend time in our Dunbar week, our Dunbar day that's coming up. I beg you to get to learn the community because we've never failed you on a levy. We've never, I looked up there, we've never, Inner Southwest has never turned their backs on you. What did he do? I've been interviewed by OSHA three times. The Ohio Department of Education, one time. DPS finally called me down with their security guard, security person a couple of years ago to interview me. My statements never got to you for a decision to be made. Believe me, when OSHA calls you, you don't want to talk to OSHA. They know they already have the answers before you sit down. I'm just telling you, 
this is not justice. I don't know what your decision is going to be. I know what it should be. Between what I'm seeing on TV, it's already been said, I'm not going to waste your time. Children being separated, separation, separation, separating um, causes anxiety, causes long-term damage. You have to realize it. Quit look, looking at them with the John Henry syndrome, big, black, strong, you'll get over it. They're hurting. Many didn't come tonight because they didn't know how to control their emotions. They're hurting. While their teammates are on social media, their, 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 their um, colleagues and friends are on social media bragging about what they did at the college's campuses and all those. This is a second year that totally put together, Dr. Harris, we have missed 33 days of preparation. And that's why we get stumped the first two games, because you can't catch up like that in football. I hope we do the right thing. I know we're going in a new direction. But how new is new when the same people have been turned around over and over? It's the same old thing. Mr. Albert Power, followed by Diane Sampson. Hello, um, I'm Albert Powell. Uh, don't help to speak behind Alfred Powell. He's a great orator. <laughs> um, but um, I am Darren Powell's father. And let me add that his mom did not come tonight because she just can't take it anymore. Now I know many of you are parents and many people in this room as parents. And you teach your kids to do the right things. And when they do the right things and you see people tearing at them and keep biting them, you don't know what else to tell them. Now I'm gonna say a few things and I'm trying to be quick because a lot of things have been, excuse, it's been, it's been said. But I've, I'm a graduate of, a, I went to Roosevelt, closed, went to Roth, coached at Dunbar over 30 something years. Been in this system, a DPS employee for 37 years either as a volunteer or pay. I gave up pay two years ago so another young African-American young man who wanted to come back that graduated from Dunbar, went to college and got his degree, could have a job. So I did that. So I stay as a volunteer. But the points I want to make is simple as this. Darren went to Dunbar High School, state champion, honor roll student, went to University of Cincinnati on a scholarship, transferred to a HCBU at Lincoln University, graduated, came back to this community, worked in the junior high system, two or three years, worked his way up to an assistant under us at Dunbar High School, and then became one of the youngest coaches in this district. I stayed around, his uncle stayed around as mentors to make sure he did nothing stupid. And we feel that he has grown and he has done what we ask these African young males to do. Come back to where you are and be an example. When they see him, they see themselves. He can tell them, you can make it because I made it. And that's what we're taking away. I don't know how else to explain it. You don't tear away kids away from a parent. You're hearing it on the national news. This is very, very similar. You heard it from the kids. We ain't coached none of them. Mr. McManus, last year, you said something that I'll never forget. What you saw on Fox News and your second vote for Darren was to keep him. You saw more than a football coach. You saw somebody who cared. These things need to be looked into. Darren has helped this Board of Education on different issues that you don't really know about. Certain people do, and I don't want to put nobody on the spot. He has put his neck on the line, his reputation on the line. He has helped out. When this board called, when the lawyer called and asked him to change his story and say he misheard some things, he didn't do that. The lawyer had to come back and say, he's credible. Let's not fight the fine. 
That wasn't under your direction, Dr. Lolly. I give you that credit. But he told the truth, just like me and his mama taught him to. Just like he teach these kids, tell the truth. Here's some points I want to make. There is no excuse for that doc that got out. That doc that got out that had that mistake on it, as it was explained to me and his mom about Mr. Freed being the coach, was supposed to have been a mistake. People make mistakes. I own my own business. I make mistakes. But you know what? Somebody's got to be held accountable for that mistake. And if we recognize that it was such a horrible mistake, somebody from Human Resources should have picked up the phone and said, Mr. Powell, we made a mistake. Please ignore it. There has not been a football coach hired yet. But you know what that mistake revealed? The intent. The intent that it was going another direction. Because Darren Powell didn't even have an interview without the insistence and the intervention of Dr. Lolly. And I want to thank you for least insisting he gets an interview. But at that point, and if it's a lie, they told it, the coach was already, was the, the, the coach that said the subject to be on the, to be the coach now was already given the job the day of his interview. <laughs> After, that was before Darren Powell or Mr. Faison or anybody else was interviewed. So the rest of it was just a sham. It needs to be looked into. I want to also say, trust the process. The process is fixed. If the coach is already hired, it's, it's, it's fixed. It's flawed. There was no parents involved. There was no students involved. At other schools, when coaches were interviewed, guess who was involved? Parents and students. I was told was summer vacation, you couldn't find no kids, and uh, 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 all the parents that we asked couldn't be there that day. Then you move the interviews. You move the interviews. That's how you fix that. But this, is, this has been a bias. It's been a fix. Because there's been people that has given direction to people. You can hire anybody. Don't hire any previous staffs from Dunbar, including me, my 37 years. My brother's 30-something years. Facing's 30-something years. Don't hire any previous people from, other staff, from the staffs, especially the pals. Now, to me, that's discrimination. That's slander. That's collusion. That's bias. This board has better integrity than that. This board should not stand that any of these things should be allowed in any of the hiring process. And in closing, I want to say this investigation one don't have nothing to do with the other. HR has the proper document to support that from the state. The same people you talk to, we talk to. One don't have nothing to do with the other. The president was set. He coached under the same circumstances last year. Matter of fact, he coached three sports. He coached basketball, he coached track, and he coached football. Under the same circumstances. Now it's such a big deal. These young men need him. His kids need him. It's not like we're paying a tremendous amount of money to coaches. You don't coach in Dayton Public Schools for the money. Believe me, time I feed them, take them home, pick them up, whatever we got to do, clothe them, it's no money. It costs me money to coach. <laughs> but we love what we do. We love Dunbar High School. And Darren Powell loves it. And he's an example, and you need to take that at heart. And I'm asking you, whatever line this item comes up on, you need to at least discuss it and investigate it because it's going to be a horrible mistake. And you need to come to Dunbar Day because Dunbar Day has a voice in this community, a very loud voice. A person that's no longer on this board told me in a private meeting, oh, blah, 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 blah. I said, well, we supported you. While well, I carry West Dayton, they are no longer here. Thank you. Good evening, Dion Sampson, 224 North Williams Street. Uh, I must say that I am 
um, stuck because I am a Dunbar graduate and um, I didn't know that the Wolverines was going to be in the house. But I do want to say to the young men here, um, I am absolutely, as a man in this community, I am absolutely proud of each and every one of you. Absolutely. So good evening, um, Superintendent Lolly, President Harris. Um, on Thursday, February 1st, 2018, there was an event that happened in our area that shook those of us who work with young people for real. There were seven young men who robbed an AT&T store in a very disturbing fashion. Out of that seven, I personally know or have worked with four of those young men. As I sat and listened to the news regarding this situation on the first, I couldn't help but feel that I missed something. Could I have said or done something differently to reach any of those young men? I couldn't think of anything regarding those four young men. But I did wonder how many more of our young men in our schools and community were potentially drifting toward unhealthy choices in life. So because the Marvel movie Black Panther was the talk of the town at the time, I decided to use this movie to see if I could reach 75 young men to make the decision to make healthy decisions. So I posted on my personal Facebook page asking my network of friends and family to help make it possible to take 75 young men and 75 active men from our community to go see the movie and then afterwards to have a meal and engage in a real conversation. And in four days, this community raised over $3,000 to make movie and a conversation happen. We had the date reserved, the movie popcorn and meal paid for, the place where the meal and conversation would take place, but we didn't have the young men or the transportation. It would have been easy for me to get the young men because of my ties and work in this community, but I wanted to focus on this district in which I am a product of and at the time worked in. So this is the reason I am making this presentation here in this space to say thank you to Dr. Lolly for providing us four buses with four absolutely amazing drivers. And to say thank you to the principals, assistant principals, but most importantly, the males of color coordinators for helping select 75 young men who they thought could benefit from such an event. Out of the 75 young men who attended, 60 of them were Dayton Public School students. To say that these young men were awesome wouldn't accurately describe these young men. I want to say thank you to the parents and guardians of these young men for trusting us with their most precious assets. Lastly, I want to say thank you publicly to the 60 men from our community who attended and poured into the lives of these young men on Saturday, March the 3rd. And some of those men are here. We had men from all walks of life and professions who volunteered to be a part of this day. The dialogue that took place between multi-generations was priceless. After this event, a few of those men are still mentoring a few of those students who attended the event. They've helped these young men secure employment, helped provide resources to a few of the families, and a few of these men have personally walked through the college admission process with a few of the seniors who participated in this event. Matter of fact, this community wanted those seniors to know that we truly believe in them. So we paid the senior fees and dues for the 12 seniors who attended our movie and a conversation. So once again, Dr. Lolly and Dayton Public Schools, thank you for helping make this day happen. Even though I orchestrated this event, this was so much bigger than me. This was about us collectively doing our best to make sure that we don't keep losing our young men to the streets or the prison. I was once told by an educator in high school to my face that I would never amount to anything and would be dead by 18. It's one thing to be killed in the streets, but it's an entirely different thing to be killed in school. But I was stronger than most and use those words and continue to use those words to be the fuel to my purpose. It was the pain of his words that ignited my passion and purpose in life to be that one thing in life that I wish I had growing up, a man to help me. Mm -hmm. So what I do isn't about the spotlight. 
It's not about position at the table with important people or even money. I do what I do to make a difference in the lives of young people and our community. So once again, thanks again for helping me be and make a difference. Randy Faison, followed by Lucretia Jackson. Good evening. Good evening. Members of the board, superintendent, and I'm oftentimes amazed at how we don't make it a point of speaking to the treasurer, <laughs> Madam Treasurer. Thank you. I come to you this after this evening to discuss with you concerns I have about not receiving a fair and objective interview in our interview process. This interview process, as you well know, includes filing your intent with the Montgomery County Consortium, if you will, and having the necessary certificates and licensures to uh, qualify. I've done all those things, and I've done all those things now. This is my 40th year coaching in the Dayton Public School area. I started at Dunbar High School in 1979. Dunbar High School, where I was the vice president of my class, of class of 78, three-year letterman of the football team, and I also played uh, tennis. <laughs> I was a Botillion member of the student senate, so leadership tends to come without trying. But I am concerned that in this process, I was not given an interview at four of the places of which I express interest. As a matter of fact, again, we took and made it a Dunbar thing as if the only place that I had applied was for Dunbar High School. So what we did was steered my information to the Dunbar situation when in fact I had applied for Meadowdale, Mr. Ponitz, excuse me, Dave Ponitz. Uh, I had applied for Thurgood Marshall. And I found it interesting, again, that I was directed, if you will, to Dunbar High School. But that just wasn't the thing, the thing that interests me most. And it sort of came home to me this weekend when I attended an all-class uh, cookout at Dunbar High School. I tell you what, people say what they want about that Dunbar experience, but it is something you will have had to have been there. I tell people all the time, when you are part of a institution was built in 1933 for black folks, I'm quite sure people didn't intend for it to be around this long. I oftentimes wonder why I continue to be, and this will be the second year in a row, that I've applied for multiple open positions, and I was steered to Dunbar, only to have last year, of course, Mr. Powell was reinstated. This year, I have the opportunity of going for an interview, and that interview happened at approximately a quarter to four on the 29th of May. And if you all will recall, during your five o'clock special meeting, the gentleman, I think, Mr. Freeze, I think I heard the name, name appeared on the board dock. I don't know if it was presented and I don't know if it was steered and put on the board's agenda, but I found that to be interesting. And someone who cares a little bit about Randy Face and said to him on Wednesday morning, you might need to check because I believe that person that is intended to be a teacher and a coach at Dunbar has already been presented. I called Affleck Director Welch, and of course, as I do, I directly confronted her. And she shared with me, oh, it was a mistake. That's not the way that was supposed to go. As a matter of fact, I don't believe it was formally presented to the board. I went on and I said, okay, and I hung up the phone. That was on Wednesday the 30th. By Friday the 1st, she was calling me with the so-called bad news. She shared with me that they had selected the individual they wanted, and I said, well, that so happened to have been the same individual that was on the board dock, and she shared with me, I cannot and I should not discuss personnel issues. You know, I've been here 58 years. And like Mr. Powell said, I've been tinkered on the head and told it was raining uh, many a time. Sometimes I just consider it a given, being an African-American male in this system. 
one that is qualified, certified, and has been tried and tested. I recognize it doesn't necessarily breed support. It oftentimes breeds contempt and envy. And I take that as a given as well. But this time, I want to say to this board, it is time that it stops. And I recognize the board was not necessarily by law appointed or <clears throat> elected to micromanage. But as I said to one board member, regardless of what happens, when your staff does what it do and it's not above board, it's going to fall in your lap anyway. Mm -hmm. The people elect you for a four-year stint. At best, we give superintendents and their staff three, maybe most of the time it's two, but we never, very seldom ever go over three years. Why? Because the boss should be in place longer than the employee. I am concerned with how we're treating folks in this district. We have the, the, the charter school movement, yes, the, we have the other movements that are going on that have impacted our enrollment, but we're running people away from here. With our short-sighted, our self-centered, and our selfish and narcissistic behavior, we're running people away from a fine district that I am very proud of. I don't agree with everything that it does, but I'm proud of it. It's like America. In some cases, it's not necessarily the best place to be, depending on who you are, but I think it's the best country we have and we know to this date. And I don't agree with everything that goes on in it either. But I wouldn't move for all the tea in China, as my mom used to say. And these things that are happening are not necessarily a mistake either. My mom says, it's not a mistake when it's intended. These things are intended. And what we do is we participate in collusion, we steer, we make value decisions about who should be where based on what? Lord knows it couldn't be that we know football. And Lord knows it couldn't be that we know, we know uh, the ins and outs and the ups and downs of the majority population in this district. Because ours, these are not the people making these decisions. We are being saturated with people's personal opinions, innuendos, and what they might think. And they're making the decisions about people's lives they know nothing about and have no, yes. have no appreciation for. We don't shop in the same place where these children shop. We don't worship. We don't cry where they cry. But we make decisions about their lives, and it's unfair. And I can tell you, I don't expect this board to micromanage. We pay some people some pretty good money to make good decisions that are in the best interest of the environment. Right now, we're falling short. So therefore, on behalf of these children and the other children that are not here, I hold this board accountable. And if it takes a little micromanagement, so be it. Because decisions are being made that don't represent what most of you sit up on that board stand for. I've talked to a number of you, and I have a good feel for you. But our staff right now, we're falling far short of the mark of doing things right and doing things that are in the best interest of these children and most of all, the best interest of this community. And plus, being a Dunbar man, this isn't a Dunbar way because we don't do that. We're used to taking everybody where they are because we all started at the bottom and we rise up and we take whoever wants to go with us. This here, what has happened, Four positions I've applied for. One bogus interview, and I didn't even get an interview at the others. And if you can find someone, and I bought you a little gift. These are my resumes. Mm -hmm. And if you can find anyone, I have more tenure than any coach in this area. I have 40 years of smelling jock straps and watching children cry <laughs> and watching them grow. 40 years. And those of us that read the word, you know that that number 40 has significance. I have not had an opportunity to, to, I've had four coaches under my tutelage that have been head coaches in this district. Four, James Lacking, fine young man. Michael McCray, fine young man. Johnny Wortham, fine young man. And it bothers me, it bothers me to this day that I've not been given an opportunity to lead this troop, but everyone says, even in this letter, even in my too bad, too, too sad letter, it says, I encourage you, we encourage you to apply for other positions. Well, 
That's a lie, too, because I did. And I didn't so much as get an interview at three of the other vineyards and was totally disrespected and mocked at the one that I did receive an interview for. And I don't appreciate it. Yes, I'm a competitor. Darren Powell and I wanted the same position. But what I hate the most is that you took a broad brush and painted he and I with the same brush. And you're wrong. Staff is wrong. I deserve an opportunity to be interviewed at other venues that I've applied for, and it's just not happening. And Lord knows the people making the decisions don't know much about anything having to do with what they're interviewing for. God bless you, and I thank you for thank your time. Thank you, Brother Board members, my name is LaQuisha Jackson. I am a product of Paul Lawrence Dunbar. I graduated 2002. Upon my graduation, prior to my graduation actually, I am a student athlete. What you are looking at is a bachelor's prepared registered nurse going on to complete my master's. So I am qualified to diagnose people and the conclusion that I've come to while sitting here is, since I have to address the entire board, you all suffer from what we call in the nursing world a knowledge deficit. <laughs> it saddens me because as a parent, I have to sit here and I have to watch these young black men come before you and give your statement, but you already have in your mind what you're going to do. And it saddens me because you make a statement at the beginning of what we are supposed to do and how we are to respect you, but as I sit and watch, most of you can't even look at the people who come to this podium on behalf of Paula Lawrence Dunbar's football team. You're in your phone, you're taking notes, you're doing everything but listening. And then I take that back. Maybe you are listening, but you don't hear us. You don't see. Two out of nine of you are black. You don't feel what we feel. You have not, you probably couldn't even tell me what building sat at 2222 Richley Avenue. Half of you have probably never been down Richley Avenue. Coach Powell has invited you to come to Dunbar Day. I will be there and it will, it would give me such pleasure to shake half of your hands. But I know if you do come, you already have in your mind what you're going to do regarding Coach Powell. When I was at Dunbar, I played volleyball. I was the best to ever come out of there to play volleyball. Thanks to Peter Pullen and Miss Winborn, I didn't have the grades. But Peter Pullen told me, go to college. Talk to that person, that coach there see what they can do for you as far as a scholarship. I went to the University of Cincinnati. I did not get a chance to play. You know why? Because I joined the United States Air Force. I am a decorated veteran, disabled, because the people at Dunbar helped me. I lost a nephew this time a year ago, black man, 22 years old, to gun violence. Had my nephew had the chance to do what he wanted, which was go to Dunbar, play basketball, who knows where he would be, but he didn't have the guidance. I'm looking at all of you right now, and I thank you for looking at me, because all the people who come before me, not one of you all looked at them at the same time. So I know that my spirit is telling me what to say, because I didn't have to write anything down. Every time y'all enter this room, if y'all don't give Darren Powell what he deserves, which is to be this father figure to these young men, every time you step in this room, you're going to see blue, because we bleed blue. Yeah. Do what y'all have to do. God has the final say. And I don't understand how you sit up there in this blue room Every time you have to come down here and listen to these, do y'all want to keep seeing us? 
We're asking for a man not just to have his job, to be a father. A father. I'm pretty sure half of y'all came from a two-parent home, so you can't, again, look at these black men and feel what we are feeling. I'm here for my child, who is 11 years old, who comes from a separated family. Like Coach Powell said, you're ripping us. You're separating us. You're taking from us. Y'all hear us, but y'all don't care because it ain't you. It ain't your child. Uh, blessings to Miss Sheila, who I wish were here, but she's at a funeral. This is our funeral that she should be attending because y'all killing us. So as y'all pound your gravels and, and pay your money to whoever you have to pay to make y'all look good, remember, them 93 however much dollars, that's probably how many more black kids about to die because you're taking something from them that they need. Y'all worried about y'all title? We worried about having a man that care about our kids, what most black women won't. So thank you for thinking, but we already know what you're gonna do. We bleed blue, and y'all got to keep seeing it every day. You're in here. Thank you. That, that's it. Thank you. At this time, we have a recommendation, bowed agreement, and general release. Board members, you should have the document before you. Are we prepared to vote? Um, we need the motion, Mr. President. I'd like to motion uh, yes. to approve the buyout agreement of general release between the Dane Public Schools and People Admin Inc. Is there a second? Second. Is there a second? The property moving seconds question. Hearing none, we're ready to vote. President Harris? Yes. Mr. Al Hamdani? Yes. Mr. McManus? Yes. Ms. Reiner? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. <coughs> Dr. Walker? Yes. Ms. Wick Ghani? Yes. Seven yeses. Motion carries. Thank you very much. We have some board resolutions. Where is the Department of Recreation and Youth Services pursuing the vacation of part of French Lane to expand the parking lot for the Greater Dayton Recreation Center located at 2021 West Third Street? The parking lot expansion will add 68 new parking spaces, including ADA, Required spaces for public parking. Be it resolved, the Dayton City School District Board of Education approves the requested uh, vacation. I move. Second. Properly move and second. Is a question? Are we prepared to vote? President Harris? Yes. Mr. Al Hamdani? Yes. Mr. McManus? Yes. Ms. Reiner? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Dr. Walker? Yes. Ms. Wick Ghani? Yes. Seven yeses. Motion carries. Thank you very much. We also have a contract for consultant to assist the Dayton Board of Education in evaluating the school district's treasurer's department. What is your pleasure? I move. Second. Been properly moved and second. Question? No question. We're prepared to vote. President Harris? Yes. Mr. Al Hamdani? Yes. Mr. McManus? Yes. Ms. Reiner? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Dr. Walker? Yes. Ms. Wick Ghani? Yes. Seven yeses. Motion carries. Thank you. At this time, we have uh, superintendent recommendations. I'd like to recommend the approval of the DSS, the district support staff salary schedule. I so move. 
Second. Question? No question. We're prepared to vote. President Harris? Yes. Mr. Al Hamdani? Yes. Mr. McManus? Yes. Ms. Reiner? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Dr. Walker? Yes. Ms. Wick Ghani? Yes. Seven yeses. Motion carries. I'd like to recommend the approval of the administrative updated salary schedule. So move. Second. We properly move and second. Are there questions? No questions. We're prepared to vote. President Harris? Yes. Mr. Al Hamdani? Yes. Mr. McManus? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Dr. Walker? Yes. Ms. Wick Ghani? Yes. Seven yeses. Thank you. Motion carries. I'd like to recommend the approval of the DEA continuing contract for Sukari <coughs> Baker. She's followed all the LPDC uh, processes, and the LPDC has reviewed and verified all documents submitted in accordance with the Ohio Department of Education. It has been confirmed that she has um, met all the requirements to receive a continuing contract. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Properly moved and second question. Hearing none, we prepare to vote. President Harris? Yes. Mr. Al Hamdani? Yes. Mr. McManus? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Dr. Walker? Yes. Um, Ms. Wigani? Yes. Seven yeses. Thank you. Motion carries. I'd like to recommend the approval of the frozen vacation hours resolution. Former and current assistant principals and principals still working in Dayton Public School District to have vacation hours that were frozen in 2013 will be paid for those hours on June 29, 2018. The rate of pay will be equal to the rate of pay at which the hours were frozen. This resolution serves as a final dispensation of those frozen vacation hours for the current affected employees. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Properly moved and second question. No questions. We're prepared to vote. President Harris? Yes. Mr. Al Hamdani? Yes. Mr. McManus? Yes. Ms. Reiner? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Dr. Walker? Yes. Ms. Wick Ghani? Yes. Seven yeses. Motion carries. Thank you. I'd like to recommend the approval of the renewal for the Dayton Business Tech High School sponsorship contract. I so move. Second. Is there a second? Properly moved and second. Question? No questions. We're prepared to vote. President Harris? Yes. Mr. Al Hamdani? Yes. Mr. McManus? No. Ms. Reynard? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Dr. Walker? Yes. Ms. Wick Ghani? Yes. Six yeses, one no. Motion carries. Thank you. I'd like to recommend the approval of the abolishment of the following clerical position. I recommend the abolishment of the clerical position due to restructuring of the department. It is a level six state and federal programs department. We restructured that department and uh, need to abolish the position that was uh, previously held by the person. So moved. Second. And properly moved and second. Are there any questions? Are we prepared to vote? President Harris? Yes. Mr. Al Hamdani? Yes. Mr. McManus? Yes. Ms. Reiner? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Dr. Walker? Yes. Ms. Wick Ghani? Yes. Seven yeses. Motion carries. Thank you. And that concludes my uh, recommendations and resolutions, Mr. President. Thank you, Superintendent. At this time, we have uh, consent agenda items from human resources, contract and agreements, consultant contracts, and our uh, memorandum of understanding. Is there a motion to receive? So moved. And properly moved. Is there a second? Second. Properly moved. Second. Want to speak? Want to speak? Is there questions? May I speak? Uh, Mr. President, yes, sir. I would like to recommend that we pull out uh, item 172 on the superintendent's human resources recommendations and vote on it separately. You've heard the recommendation <coughs> from board member Walker. What's your pleasure? 
Can we get a little time to look at it, Mr. President? All right. Thank yes, you. sir. What was the line number, Mr. 127 under the human resources. 172. 172, 172 under okay. human resources. Thank you, sir. Okay. Do we need a second on that, or we wait? We need a second. Are we prepared? Is there a second? I'll, I'll second all. Been yeah. properly moved and second. Questions on the motion? We're prepared to vote. President Harris? Yes. Mr. Al Hamdani? Yes. Mr. McManus? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Dr. Walker? Yes. Ms. Wick Danny? Yes. <clears throat> Seven yeses. Motion carries. All right, are we prepared to vote on item 172? Yes, and also, well, let's vote on the consent agenda first. So moved. So moved. Second. Is there a second? I've been properly moved and second for the consent agenda. Hearing none, are we prepared to vote? President Harris? Yes. Mr. Al Hamdani? Yes. Mr. McManus? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Dr. Walker? Yes. Ms. Wigani? Yes. Seven yeses. Motion carries. Thank you. Are we prepared now to vote on item number 172? Dr. Walker making a motion. Yeah. I made the motion, and may I speak <laughs> to the motion, please? Yes, sir. With regards to my colleague here on the dais, uh, and to be quite honest, uh, with the sake of transparency, I think that in terms of, of policy, uh, there are some un I have some unreadiness in terms of how our policy was dealt with. And so for me, I am. Um, uh, I have a sense of unreadiness to move forward with this particular uh, recommendation. Yes, sir. Was, was there a motion made, Mr. President? No motion was made at this time. Is there a motion to There's for the a vote? There's a motion uh, to vote on it separately. That's what, well, yes, we, sir, already, sure. we already agreed on that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are we prepared to vote on this item? Is there a motion? Yes. Are you motioning? Are you I will. Moving? I'll make the motion to, uh, for a vote on item 172 on the consent agenda. Thank you. Is yes, that second? Second. And properly move and second. Are we prepared to vote? Now we can discuss. Open for discussion. That's the time. Uh, so we're, we're voting on the issue. Of separate. Separate just, issue. Um, I understand that. Uh, if my concern is that we're prolonging um, these young students um, from moving forward and participating, getting their, the, the sport ready to go. Uh, so if we're going to vote on it, um, and then I guess we'll have to decide after that. So my concern is for the kids, so okay. Any other discussion, board members? Yeah. May, I'm sorry. No. Okay. Mr. President, board Walker, I, yes. I just want to make sure that when we vote on this, that we have a real clear of what we're voting. You know, you know that a, that a yes vote means this, and a no vote means that. Okay, that's. We are voting on item number 172, and that is a supplemental contract of head football coach at Dunbar High School. Okay, and so then the yes vote would mean that they would be, that the 172 would be the person holding that position, and a no vote would mean that one voting against that person holding that position. Correct. Th thank you, I just wanna make, Correct. I think it's important that any other discussion? Yeah, Board let members. me just, you know, without, with this being a personnel item, we want to respect that. Yes. However, my concern is around process. Yes, sir. 
Any other discussion? Are we prepared to vote? President Harris? Yes. Mr. Al Hamdani? Yes. Ms. Reinhardt? Yes. Ms. Taylor? Yes. Dr. Walker? No. Ms. Wick Ghani? Yes. Mr. McManus? No. Three no, four yeses. Thank you. Motion carries. Uh, Madam Treasurer? No, no. We have five yeses and two noes. Yeah, five yeses and two noes. Yes, motion carries. Thank you. At this time, we will have our treasurer's uh, resolutions. 